so yeah, Judas Judas came up. He he did kiss me, um, uh, like a greeting, you know, like they're doing the, the in Europe in particular, um, indicating to the soldiers that I was the man, and. Um, the soldiers were soldiers that were a mixture of soldiers. They were Roman soldiers, but they were they were given to the Sanhedrin to maintain order in the temple. So they were the soldiers that came to get me, and uh, they bound me and uh, and took me off um, and brought me before this ha a hastily prepared Sanhedrin court. There were seventy one members in the Sanhedrin. My own father was one of the members, um, and. Uh, but they didn't invite all of the members who had any liking for me. So they only invited the members who, who wanted me dead. The, court, the Sanhedrin court was split in half because of my teachings, basically. The, there were half of them who really loved the teachings of divine truth, and there were the other half who hated them with vengeance. The half that hated them with a vengeance was all about money, actually, and power. It was all about them losing the power of, over the people. Because I was promoting a direct relationship with God, with each individual. They were promoting a, a relationship with God through the priesthood. So obviously a totally different concept. And, uh, and they were earning over 30 tonnes of gold every year from the people. Um, so you were talking like huge, huge sums nowadays. You're talking, I think, I think in nowadays terms it's like five or six billion billion dollars or something every single year was coming in from them. like just people just being raped of all this money um, so there was it was a huge business and and my actions were destroying it and so there was a lot of anger and rage towards me at the Sanhedrin and so um, I was bound and and um, they you know they'd come up and hit hit me or punch me and spit in my face and all that kind of stuff and then um, then they, uh, you know, they brought in so-called witnesses who had never seen me, uh, accusing me of things that I'd never done, um, things like that. And uh, and eventually the court decided, um, and without me actually saying a word, uh, the court decided that uh, that I should be executed. But they decided they couldn't do it themselves. Um, they didn't want to do it themselves for a lot of reasons because if if they did it themselves. There were quite a lot of Jews now who were supportive of me and they felt that there'd be a huge revolt um, and they wanted to control a revolt. They thought that if they killed, if they killed me, then uh, they were quite slimy men, right? Really, a lot of them. They were, they were really political savvy, politically savvy. And so they made some decisions that they wanted to get it, me involved like with the Romans so the Romans would kill me. So, uh, so they sent me to Pilate, um, took me to Pilate, and Pilate was in a... <coughs> <coughs> it's just come here for some reason. <coughs> Pilate's still in the fifth sphere of the spirit world. Now, as we speak, he's not yet in the sixth sphere, and he's just come to visit, so... Anyway. But they took me to, um, to Pilate, and... Um, they, myself and Pilate had a long discussion actually, uh, around an hour or so, where we were talking about truth. He was questioning me to determine whether I wanted to be king of the Jews and all those kind of things. And I told him, you know, my kingdom's no part of this world. And, and if it were, that my attendants would have fought for me. And I, you know, I didn't want them to fight. It wasn't about that. It was about something that was going on in the spirit world. And I talked to him about the spirit world. And I talked to him about truth, the importance of truth, the importance of God's truth, divine truth, and quite a few other things. And he basically ended our conversation with what is truth anyway, you know, he just, he got so frustrated with the conversation. But he took me out onto a, very similar to how it shows it on the Passion, um, and presented me to the people and said, look, I don't find any fault with him, um, and uh, so I don't feel that he should be killed, you know. He was also afraid of his own... He was very afraid. Yeah. Because of political stuff that was going on. Yeah, he was very afraid of his own position because what was happening is that there was a change in government in Rome that was affecting his livelihood in, in Jerusalem. He was skimming lots of money from the temple 
So what, there was a lot of money things going on, where the the. Um, it was Sir Janus, wasn't it? Sir Janus was um, looking after administrator of the, for the emperor at Tiberius at the time because yeah. Tiberius didn't want to do it, so he put a person he believed in charge to do it. That person was his best friend at first. Then he started seeing on seeing himself possibly in that position, but he didn't have that position, you know, from his upbringing sort of thing or through through rank or whatever it was. So he started like trying to milk the money to try and put bribes everywhere to get himself in that position. Mm. His idea was to like assassinate um, Tiberius him, but he became aware of this and had Sejanus assassin are killed and all of his followers that knew about it, all the family, anyone that come and grieve for that person. So there'd be no more uprising about it. But Pilate also was a person who was in charge of skimming all the money from all the taxes there to try and fund all the stuff he wanted to do. And Pilate somehow escaped being noticed, so he was shitting himself basically of being found out, so he didn't want any uprisings to do with anything, he just wanted to keep it all quiet and yeah. let the Jews bugger off, you know, mm. you sort out your man. Yeah. So Pilate had a lot of reasons to stay away from the whole issue. He got forced into it by the Sanhedrin and they started, they had agitators in the crowd saying, you know, he's calling himself a king of the Jews, which I wasn't obviously, but that's what they kept on saying. He's calling himself King of the Jews. We have no king but Caesar. And, you know, really, really getting into Pilate, like, you know, this is going to affect you with Caesar if, if you do something here. And so Pilate, Pilate firstly came up with an idea that they were just angry with me. And, and so he decided just to have me flogged. Um, and uh, um, so, so I got taken away to be flogged, but he, was, he gave instructions that I wasn't flogged too much, but the soldiers um, the were quite angry with me, and so they, uh, they flogged me pretty badly. I couldn't hardly stand up after the flogging. And uh, it, was, yeah, it was pretty much like it's shown in the Passion, pretty much blood everywhere. <laughs> and um, so... They propped me up in front of the crowd now, hoping that my bloody mess would uh, would sort of calm them all down, and they'd look at what they'd done, and and I'd just give it away, you know. But they didn't. So, um, so that's when the soldiers sort of whack they whacked a crown of thorns on my head, and um, and they did a bit of water torture type stuff with me as well, and and brutalised me, my private parts and things like that as well. And uh, they sort of presented me back to the, to the crowd. Um, and by this time, um, my, uh, you know, obviously a lot of the people who were with me um, knew what was happening and Mary was actually not in Jerusalem at the time but but she was by this time she was now in Jerusalem so she watched a lot of this and happening as well and my mother was there and my mother's sister and John's mother and Apostle John's himself was there and quite a lot of the other of the disciples had scattered by this time because they were worried about what would happen to them and uh, so then I was just uh, Basically, had to walk the walk, I suppose um, you could say. Um, it was a Pilate wanted to crucify, uh, didn't want to crucify me, um, but the crowd called out for my crucifixion, cruci crucifixion, and um, the, the problem was too is there was this other man, Barabbas, who, in fact, his name was Jesus, believe it or not. Um, not Barabbas. So, you know, in the Bible it talks about this man Barabbas who was a thief and a murderer. His, a his actual name was Jesus. So there were two Jesus. Um, which one do you want? Which one do you want? And uh, they freed. They freed. The reason why they freed one of us was that it was a, it was a common custom to grant a pardon for somebody on, a pass on the Passover which is happening once a year, right? It was a once a year event. So, you know, of all the political prisoners that were kept in prison, one prisoner got a pardon. And uh, so the other Jesus got a pardon. 
that's incidentally why they tried to get that over and done with really quick. Mm. So it'd be over and done with before the Sabbath, before their holy day, yeah. holy celebrations. They wanted it done and it was only now, it was only now about six hours before before the, the evening. <coughs> so, and if, if it was unlawful for a person, a Jew, to touch a bloody body um, on the Sabbath, um, so anybody who died on the Sabbath was left to the following day to be prepared, generally. And uh, so what happened was that uh, um, I had to carry this stake. It wasn't a cross, it was a, just a, a pole um, up, up the mount uh, to Golgotha. And I, I, didn't, I was so exhausted that I couldn't carry it very far. And... Um, and then um, a big man, Simon, his name has stepped in and, and helped me carry it. In fact, he probably carried me and it um, up to the top of the, the mound. Um, and Corny was overseeing all this, this uh, procession. So Cornelius uh, was the centurion overseeing the whole crucifixion of the three people, not just myself. Um, the other two people they crucified the Roman way, which was with a cross. Um, but Pilate wanted to make a statement that it was to do with the Jews' decision and not his decision. So, and one of the reasons why he wanted to make that statement is that I knew his wife, and his wife had had dreams about me, um, being being you know a son of God and all those kind of things, and um, in the sense of the born again sense, and. And so she was really superstitious with me and, uh, and about me, and so she was trying to get Pilate to not do it. And so he had a lot of pressure from her, but the pressure coming from Caesar or from the threat of his life was far greater. So he decided to crucify me, but to crucify me on a stake instead of a cross, uh, which meant hanging like so um, rather than like, like so. And uh, so... Corny's already described how um, he nailed the nail into my wrist um, at the top, and then, and I was looking at Corny with love, and uh, and he he just threw down the hammer, and he d d didn't do my feet. Um, so another one of the soldiers, like those, those other soldiers, were a bit confused because he was the actual in charge so you know they didn't know what to do for a while and then they decided they have got to keep going with the crucifixion so so they they nailed my feet and um, probably the, the worst thing for me at the time was just seeing my soulmates sadness and um, sort of now now I sort of feel a bit like um, before then I felt like I'd made the right decision like it was a decision um, to allow this to occur um, but watching my soulmate's heart die just brought lots of like it's just quite sad to watch that happen and um, and you know she went from being this beautiful joyful spirit uh, to being just this really um, terrified and joyless person um, and I felt I felt one of the feelings I had after I passed was that I'd destroyed her you know in a way um, but my mother was there and John was there and a few other women were there and not many men um, it wasn't like a great crowd of people there, <coughs> just a few people, um, and uh, and they uh, because it was Passover was coming up, they decided that they needed to break my legs um, so that when you're hanging from a stake, your whole body rips in half from just under your rib cage, and all of your internal organs tear apart. And um, so they thought that I'd have to do that. They thought I'd have, they'd have to break my legs to 
make all the bottom half of the weight of my body just tear everything apart and, and, and kill me. But um, what happened was that um, because I was so sort of sensitive to everything emotionally and because of the beating that I had, I bled to death before then. Um, and, um, and, and not just, there was no muscular strength left in me anymore to hold myself together as there would normally be. A lot of people died uh, uh, in two or three days on a cross instead of just in a six hours. But in my case, I died in just under six hours. Um, and my body did tear apart and that's how I died. And then they, then I just, then I left my body just as anybody does. Um, and I watched the rest from, from the spirit world. Um, so I was there while you know they stuck a spear in my body and and I don't have any emotions about any of that n n now even because it wasn't it was just something I observed if that makes sense and, but the things I do have emotions about are just watching how sad and terrible all of the ones who were there present who loved me felt you know and, and particularly Mary and um, just the terrible emotions that they went through. They pulled me down off the cross and, or off the stake and, um, and Mary just wept for quite a few hours into the evening. Um, and then they carried my body off to be prepared for burial, which took the next day. And they didn't do it on the next day because it was the Sabbath. So the following day afterwards they were allowed to do it, so they prepared my body for burial and buried me that day. So, um, but I was watching all of these things in the spirit world, and, and obviously I was comfortable with what was happening, but nobody else was. Um, so then um, they put me in the tomb, which was actually my father's tomb. He bought a tomb when he bought a house. He bought a house in Jerusalem when I was in my twenties. Um, and, uh, and he bought a tomb in Jerusalem as well because he felt he always wanted to be buried in the holy city. And so I was, I was placed in the tomb. And what I did as soon as I was placed in the tomb and it was closed over, I, I um, destroyed the physical body. Like, I made the physical body disappear. Just go into it. Basically, you know how bodies disappear over time? Well, what I did was just hasten that process so that the body disappeared within an hour or so. And, and uh, the process of that happening uh, meant that the shroud, there was no, you know, the shroud was left there over the top, but no body. So I just, I folded up the shroud and put it um, in, the, in the corner at the head uh, of the tomb. It was like a rock that I was laying on. And, uh, and, I did that because I wanted to demonstrate that I'd done it. Do you know what I mean? That I'd actually done something, that something had happened here. I knew the tomb would at some point be rolled open. And there were a number of uh, six fear and, and celestial spirits who, who caused the rolling. They materialized the body and rolled the tomb door open. Um, the soldiers fled when it occurred. There were two or three soldiers guarding the tomb and they fled. And. Uh, and then when Mary came the next morning, my Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene, came the next morning, um, obviously the tomb was open and my body was gone. And she thought somebody had stolen me, uh, stolen my body. But then uh, as she came out of the tomb, I uh, appeared before her. I pulled together a physical body and appeared before her and um, gave her a hug and and as soon as I did that, she realised, because my form looked a bit different, um, she realised that it was me. And, uh, and then she ran back to where the other disciples who were still in Jerusalem were hiding and told them that she'd seen me and they had told her that she's crazy. Uh, and they told her that it's no, not possible and they told her that quite a few things actually, along with being a stupid woman and why do you, you're just emotional and all that kind of stuff. And she was saying, no, 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 you know, and eventually John and Peter believed her enough to actually run to the tomb and have a look. And when they ran to the tomb, they went in and seen my body was gone and they thought the same thing as she thought. And then when they came back out again, I appeared to them. And 
So by now, by this time, there's, there's three of them now who had seen the same thing. And then, uh, and then over the next 50 days, I appeared to nearly 500 people. Um, which in a materialized body. In a materialized body, yeah. So you know how this resurrection thing, people say it was a resurrected physical body. Well, it wasn't. I was just a normal spirit now, just like you will be when you pass. And when you have the power coming from God, you can materialize a form. And this happens all the time, by the way. Like, um, I, you know, I just, I've had some interactions already with different spirits who, uh, and some of the different people that I know have had interactions with spirits that I know were spirits who had materialized a form. And it happens all the time. It happens quite commonly, actually. So, um, so I materialised a form on lots and lots of different occasions, and then I actually got quite a lot of them together when I left them, and <coughs> and I sort of took my form up into the into the clouds, if you like, just to demonstrate that I, you know, that my I was in a different state, really. So a lot of the things that I tried to demonstrate are now misinterpreted, though. So, um, you know, I was just trying to demonstrate a lot of different truths in the process, but a lot of times it was misinterpreted. But uh, it affected my soulmate really badly, the whole events, and um, she was uh, six months pregnant as well, so it affected my daughter, our unborn daughter, really badly too. Um, and there's a lot of emotions that I'm going through right now about about that, uh, about how much those events affected them.